بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ریسپیکٹڈ آڈینس ٹوڈے مائی ٹاپک آف ڈسکشن از اباؤٹ سیکیٹریشل اینٹروپیان اٹس پاسبل کمپلیکیشن دیٹ از کارنیل ایپیتھیلیل ڈیفیکٹ اٹس ڈفرینٹ کازز مینیفیسٹیشنس اینڈ پاسبل ٹریٹمنٹ دیز دا ٹو سلٹ لیمپ کارنیل فوٹوگرافس ہیئر یو کین سی دیٹ ان بوتھ دیز سلائڈس بوتھ دیز فوٹوگرافس دا پیشنٹ از ان ایبل ٹو کلوز ہز آئیز It is because of this fact that the conjunctiva in the, these patients has undergone the process of scarring and due to the scarring uh, and adhesions between the conjunctiva, uh, bulbar and palpebral conjunctiva, the conjunctiva which is covering the eyeball and the conjunctiva which is under the eyelids, it develops adhesions over there. So because of adhesions strong over there, Uh, it gets scarring over there, fibrosis, and the eye does not get closed properly. The cornea is exposed to the atmosphere, and because of this exposure, he develops these types of corneal epithelial defects, which are very difficult to treat and challenging. So, here you can see the margins of these patients in cicatricial entropion are, have become round to some extent, especially superiorly, and they do not remain that skier pattern in the normal people which we see. This is because of the pull of the conjunctiva, the outermost layer of the conj eyeball conjunctiva pulls the eyelids inwards. So all these things are happening. Here you can see that uh, I uh, have shown you in this, there are some uh, corneal epithelial defects and uh, these are taking up the dye, fluorescent dye. When we put the blue filter light over there, Uh, it turns into green. So this is basically corneal epithelial defects. On the other slide you can see over there we have made a slit to show that uh, anterior chamber is still formed and uh, there is no more hypopion. Hypopion I mean the pus in anterior chamber. So it is non-infected although because of all these things going on conjunctival congestion and redness is there which can be seen. It is natural. When the patient develops such types of uh, defects over there, the body's immune mechanism comes into the action and it starts healing process. So it is obvious that these redness, inflammation and all these activities will be visible in these patients. So this is a complication of these patients. Now along with the oculoplasty, we have to handle these corneal epithelial defects also. As I mentioned earlier that these patients because of developing adhesions between the conjunctiva, conjunctiva which is the outermost layer covering the eyeball and when it goes under the eyelids we call it palpebral conjunctiva. When the adhesions develop between bulbar and palpebral conjunctiva which is shown in these slides over there with the blue arrows, these adhesions actually start developing over there and this ultimately got fibrotic, bands, scarring, all these things and we call it symblephron, symblephron. That uh, it, it makes eye to some extent sh uh, shortening of the fornixes in, in inferiorly which we can normally, in normal patient we can pull the eyelids down but in this patient we cannot pull because there are fibrosis over there, tight adhesions formed over there. So because of these adhesions, the entropion has been developed over there. So in the blue arrows, I have shown you the adhesions in the lower eyelid. Again, the blue arrows are showing us the epithelial defect. As I mentioned earlier, because of atmospheric exposure, we call it exposure keratopathy. That because of exposure to the atmosphere, uh, the eye, the cornea has developed this type of dryness and then uh, uh, these epithelial defects. The reason is the eyelids work like, just like the viper of the windscreen. They evenly distribute the tear film on the cornea. But when they have got adhesions, they have been immobilized, they cannot move it. So these patients develop, uh, do not have the coverage from the eyelids, uh, which are usually very important in the normal human beings. So because of constant exposure, these types of epithelial defects develop, which I am shown here in arrow. And in the other slide, we can see, again, I have shown the lid margins where the adhesions are getting developed. Some other uh, corneal photographs, again, 
when the eye patient is asked to move on one side this is the situation yes when these adhesions develop they develop all around they may involve the inferior conjunctiva they may develop the superior conjunctiva right or left any side and here in the left the other uh, photograph because in blue arrow we have shown you where the, it has got uh, adhesions and fibrosis and these develop scarring over there so that's we, it is difficult to pull the eyelids downwards in normal patients we can just pull the eyelids down but in this patient we cannot pull the eyelids down i mentioned earlier that these uh, conjunctival scarring adhesion fibrosis all these things which is happening is not in the inferior all eyelids it is all around the process going on this process affects wherever there is conjunctiva over there and it, it if it is the systemic disease it can affect the other body organs also other tissues also can be but here primarily we are talking about the eyeball so here you can see when we ask the patient to look in one direction again we can see over there how the adhesions have been formed over there which are usually such types of adhesions are not present in the normal healthy human beings here you can see in the one slide even the lower eyelid margin has been pulled upward it is no more the symmetrical pattern you will find somewhere it is pulled upward because these are because of these adhesions when this type of fibrosis is occurring we know that the, we have also got the tear film drainage system just next to the nose and when these types of uh, structural abnormalities have develop over there the tear film the whole uh, mechanism of lacrimation everything is disturbed over there and uh, it doesn't get properly drained yes all these tears drainage occurs when the punctum everything is at its proper place but when these types of things are happening over there so these patients are very prone to develop uh, tear film drainage problems also in the blue arrow you can see the adhesions fibrosis and it is very difficult to see the inferior the lower portion of the conjunctiva the examiner the photographer you can see is exerting pressure to pull these eyelids downwards which is usually very easy but when these types of type i i say adhesions develop over there which do not allow it to move freely the eyeball up down left wards so these adhesions develop so it now he is using force to just show as much as possible over there and these adhesions uh, make the view minimal yes slides one slide shows us the crater why it is inferiorly formed why not superiorly and middle the reason is that this area remains exposed the which the upper eyelid which covers most of the eyeball is now been struck upwards it is no more going down the blink reflex has been affected so now this inferior portion has got a crater which is getting stained and uh, apart from this the other one again in the skewer pattern i have shown the changes in the conjunctiva which is the main culprit and leading to all these things over there these two slides we have asked the patient to look upwards look upwards but as because of these adhesions the all the movements are affected so the upward movements are also restricted to some extent it is no more freely mobile and this one you can also see to some extent the upward movements are also restricted this is a slide here in these patients how to appreciate the corneal epithelial defect we usually put this fluorescein dye fluorescein colored dye and when we put this uh, blue filter light over there this area gets it takes the green color and shows us that the epithelium is damaged in these areas why i am stressing upon this of course the ophthalmologists this is the basic they know about it but particularly talk, ta talking about the family physicians and the medical students and general public that the, how this color comes over there this color greenish is because of this orange color dye which is present in the form of some uh, strips and also we have got this fluorescein drops we put it and from the slit lamp examining over there or even direct ophthalmoscope these have got the blue filters if we put it over there we can appreciate the epithelium has been damaged 
and when it's damaged it takes up the green color over there and as it is shown here that inferiorly there is a crater over there which is taking up the dye. Now the problem is that corneal epithelium, the cornea is non-keratinized but when this inward turning happens to the eyelids, this eyelid margin epithelium is keratinized and when this keratinized epithelium comes in contact with the cornea it causes persistent irritation and discomfort to the patient yes and why the what is the cause of all these things happening over there this all these things are happening because of the different diseases autoimmune diseases we can say for example in female patients usually after 40 we see what disease which is ocular cicatricial pemphigoid and uh, some patients uh, it may be a very serious attack of Stevens Johnson syndrome due to the viral infection or sometimes because of any medication allergic reaction when the whole body mechanism is disturbed all the glands in the bodies are affected similarly the eyelid glands are also affected and these patients develop trachoma trachoma disease also can cause these things herpes zoster, herpes simplex, whatever the effect in the eyelids, chemical injuries, thermal injuries, burns, when the eyelid margins are destroyed, it can happen and sometimes because of the chronic use of uh, glaucoma medications, this cicatricial uh, entropion also develops, scarring happens over there. So this is the basically the causes of these uh, patients uh, which are important talk about the treatment of these patients we have to keep the whole picture in the mind as I discussed earlier that secretion entropion is basically the shortening of the posterior lamellae of the eyelids because of the conjunctival scarring the eyelid fornices when the uh, conjunctiva from the back of the eyelids take over the cover the eyeball so they fornices lower fornices these are here they get shortened up they do not maintain that much depth over there so these all these things symblephron and all these things are happening over there so what is the thing is that uh, the most important thing is to protect protect the cornea this is our target number one so we have to advise frequent preservative free eye drops lubricating eye drops which we keep the atmosphere, the surface of the cornea moist, it will help in the healing over there and the tear film which is already disturbed, they will make up the deficiency to some extent. Secondly, if the situation is very bad, we can also add the ointments. Ointments, uh, these uh, tear film, artificial lubricating ointments, this basically stay for a longer period of time. So we can advise them these lubricating ointment depending upon the severity two times or even three times. These things basically give us time to purchase some time because ultimate treatment for these patients usually go towards the surgical intervention. The second thing is if we see our crater over there to prevent secondary bacterial infection we have to put the topical antibiotic drops and in this situation quinolones uh, like uh, ciprofloxacin or ofloxacin eye drops is a good choice which can be used to prevent the secondary bacterial infection. Then it depends how much the epithelium has been damaged. If it is superficial, they will recover. But if it is a deep one corneal epithelial defect which is going to lead us to be, sometimes we see patients where cornea is just going to perforate over, then that is another issue. Then we have to manage the corneal perforation, we have to apply glue over there, we have to sometimes apply the bandage contact lenses, although very difficult in such patients to put the bandage contact lens, it doesn't stay over there. Sometimes we have to mobilize the conjunctival flap to cover over there and sometimes we have to do the central toxography. But the challenge in these things is that we have very limited space, we have very limited space to move the eyelids. So, the primary objective is to keep the lubrication, extensive eye drops, frequent eye drops, ointments and antibiotic drops. Plus after this we have to take the help from the oculoplastics. Oculoplasty depends upon the severity of the grades. They can do different types of the procedures which we will discuss now. If a surgeon is going to attempt any surgery, the first and the foremost important thing is the eye should be quiet. It should not be an inflamed eye over there. 
if it is uh, inflamed eye and the congested eye it should be controlled with uh, uh, steroids and immunosuppression before surgery it is very important to control the inflammation number, one. number two in mild to moderate cases tarsal fracture is a technique which is done by the surgeons and the posterior margin posterior lamella the surgeons makes a full thickness incision 2 mm distant to the lid margin and after that he applies some everting sutures just to turn the eyelids margin outside so tarsal fracture is also a technique for mild to moderate cases severe cases as i showed in number of slides earlier there is there are adhesion scarring all these things so the oculoplastic surgeon first of all has to maintain some, some space over there for him to mobilize it he has to break cut those adhesions and whenever he breaks over there there comes the empty spaces when the conjunctival bands are cut over there he has to maintain some space he has to put some uh, rings over there to create a space over there for him but uh, these again can develop adhesions if the systemic disease is going on over there actively so apart from this once he has created a space once he has broken the adhesions and the eyeball has got some mobility over there and he has got some space over there then in severe cases one option is that he takes the uh, mucous membrane graft from the oral cavity yes the oculoplastic surgeon the eye plastic surgeon takes graft from the uh, oral cavity buccal cavity and then these grafts are placed over there by the eyelid margin it is split eyelid margin is vertically cut there is two areas of the eyelids anterior and posterior when we talk and this is through the gray line over there and he gives incision and makes up the eyelid margin some gapping space and then that graft which has been taken from there from the buccal cavity that is placed on the eyelid margins so because of this some space is created and these eyelids which were going inside they turn moving outside so this uh, buccal musa uh, grafting is very beneficial in such patients to manage severe form of the uh, cicatricial entropion but the things remains over there if we do not control the systemic disease these are prone to develop these uh, cases so this was a very interesting case cicatricial entropion its clinical features manifestations and possible treatment which i thought very important and interesting to be discussed with my respected audience i hope it will be beneficial in your clinical practice i want to thank you for your attendance and attention thank you